Welcome back. You are watching AWS On Air live at reInvent 2022. I'm A.M. Grabelny, joined by... I'm Chad Lacey, the global sales strategist with AWS. And we've got a couple of our friends joining us, guys. Yeah. Can you introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Jeremy Stieglitz. I'm the principal product manager for the AWS Key Management Service, KMS. Hi, I'm Mukesh Chandak, uh, business director, Thales, partner of AWS over here. All right, uh, I have a confession. I, uh, it might be a little weird. <laughs> Just, just prefacing. I, I'm a actually very, very big fan and uh, very interested in encryption. Awesome. I, I don't hear that often, you know, awesome. right? Lots and of I keys. feel strange saying it, but I, I really am fascinated <laughs> Good by to encryption. Hear that. I took some courses, and I just like ever since RSA. I'm just oh, it like it's so cool. So to be here feels like a privilege. So thank you for joining us. Well, we're looking forward to it. Uh, now that I've buttered you up. Well, I feel good. I feel good. I'm in Vegas, so. Tell us about KMS. What, what is KMS uh, and how does it relate to encryption? Sure. Great question. So the key management service does what it says it's going to do. It creates and secures keys, makes them available to all your applications, controls those with access policies, and keeps an audit over what you're doing with those keys. Right. And it's supporting both AWS services where you want to protect data, so S3, Lambda, Kubernetes, CloudTrail, and custom applications. So if you want to write your own crypto, we call that client-side crypto. You can build your own crypto into your apps or use embedded data protection. And we have, as of reInvent, over 120 services integrated to KMS to go get those keys to build that data protection directly into all those services. Wow. That's a lot of services. That is a lot of services. <laughs> so, uh, we're talking XKS today, right? Uh, what's what's the difference here, right? What, yeah. How has this yeah. changed KMS? So we're really do, launching two important initiatives this week, and they're and they're paired. Um, on Monday, we put out our digital sovereignty pledge, and we blogged about that. This is essential for our customers to have control over their data. And so we outlined a sovereign by design strategy with these pillars. These pillars include things like you control access to your data, you control the location of your data, you control the encryption of that data and more options for where you encrypt that data. And that's where XKS comes in. XKS is the external key store, oh, which okay. lets customers use KMS as that key manager, but keep the key material outside of the cloud. And that's why Talus is here. <laughs> Talus is the world leader in key management and HSM platforms. And so when we need to talk outside the cloud, a leading a vendor partner for that is Talos. Thanks, Jeremy, for that. Yeah. <laughs> and we are happy to be partnership with AWS. This is a huge initiative, uh, especially for the customer who have this enhanced sovereignty requirement, where they want to use the power of the AWS cloud, but at the same time, they want to keep the control of the keys for whatever reason pertains to them. And this is where we come in and we help them. I was going to ask real quick, not to interrupt, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, so I love. Uh, Control, I love it. I uh, feel very powerful when I'm in control. Uh, but what, I mean, honestly, the, it's, it's, it is about control, right, over your keys, but it's also oftentimes predicated by, you know, legal reasons or compliance reasons. Right. Uh, for the audience, maybe can you give us some reasons why people yeah. need to have Absol it? Absolutely, and, and you're right. I mean, there is definitely a reason. People are not doing just for the sake of it. It's actually <laughs> way more complicated, <laughs> right? It, it, it yeah. is quite complicated. I mean, there, there are so many legal reasons and the sovereignty reasons because that's becoming a big topic right now. And sure. it right. just came out with the sovereignty pledge for a reason. So uh, in 2018, uh, European Union came up with the GDPR requirement. Right. And in 2020, we saw um, a very key judgment called Shrimps 2 judgment that basically says that if you want to use the power of cloud, you want to make sure that you keep the control of the keys with you because the cloud could be accessed anywhere and from the sovereignty nations other than the European Union where they don't benefit from the similar data protection rules and regulations. Right. And that's one of the key reasons that these customers are going after getting more control. But they want to have the agility of the cloud. Yes. So right. this gives them a mix of both, the power of the cloud with the enhanced control with the solution like XKS. So, but just to clarify, to make sure, 
this doesn't mean that the data is leaving to go get encrypted somewhere else, right? Like the encryption is still happening where absolutely. it needs to happen. Absolutely, <laughs> but what it gives them, and we'll go, we'll check out in the demo later on. Yeah. Uh, yes, data and the workload and the application, everything is in the cloud, but the control of the keys right. in the customer data center, what it gives them that they can severe the link anytime they want, yeah. and nobody can get access to the resources in the AWS cloud. This is the power of XK's interface. Yeah, just, just to follow up on that at a technical level, okay. we refer to this as an external root of trust. Right. So I think you're exactly right. There's really, a, there's really two dances occurring here. When you have data directly in Lambda or S3 or Secrets Manager, a key in that application is encrypting it. Yeah. Never does plain text data leave those services. Right. Where does the root of trust come in? The root of trust comes in in the key envelope. Those services need to envelope that key, and if we use an external key store as the enveloping mechanism, now we have this sort of enhanced control. So I, I've got local operations, I don't need to move my data out, but I have to make this request to this outside entity to open that envelope. Yeah. And so okay. it's, it's essentially you can think of it as sort of a hybrid. Right. A local encryption occurring in each service, a remote call to open the envelope. Yeah. I know, that I, just, I was asking on behalf of all the security people out there, of, making sure that they know where the encryption is actually happening, right? Because Absolutely. that becomes an issue. Yeah, yeah, no, you're, you're right to ask that. Great question. And, thanks for that. And, 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 and I'll go even further. You know, some people say, you know, well, we should just encrypt outside. That starts to break the physics of the cloud. Like, if you take this to the extreme, you don't really have a cloud anymore. Right. If you can't process data inside the cloud, you make all of the sort of value of operating the cloud um, essentially moot because you can't run analytics, you can't run workloads, you can't do database applications on ciphertext data. Gotcha. Literally the point of encryption, right? right? Is that you can't retrieve it after it's <laughs> encrypted without the key. Yeah, That's right. it, it, That's it right. is, which is a very challenging problem sometimes and why XKS makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah absolutely, that's right. Great. Uh, we've got a demo too, I've heard. Is, yes, it, is it too absolutely. early? To the oh, demo. We can start no, with the demo and let's then follow up. up with more questions. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, let's get into I it. I always love seeing it. That's I know right. Chad does I too. I do too. Yeah. I'm a very visual person, so sorry. Yeah, absolutely right. <laughs> and then we can show you the power of XKS, how it can provide the access and deny the access okay. on the customer data center. So right. on this slide, this is just to give you a visual explanation of what's going on. You got the user on one side, then you got the AWS cloud. And within the AWS cloud, you get the S3 service. That's the service that uses the KMS the most. And then you got the KMS. And then you got the outside of AWS cloud, which is the corporate data center, and right. which where we have the Thales Cyphertrust Cloud Key Manager along with the Luna HSM. That's where the key material is residing. So the, what we have on the KMS, for the lack of better term, it's a pointer to the key material. And the key material is within the customer data center in Thales boxes, and it never leaves that. Yeah. And we'll, we'll showcase that with the demo. Yeah. So right. I'm going to start with the, uh, so there were a couple of setup we have already done. We have the keys created in, yeah. okay. just to uh, faster the demo process and, and show the, the real value of the demo itself. So the keys are already created both in AWS KMS as a pointer and in Cyphertrust Cloud Key Manager as a real key material. Yeah. And, and we have already configured the S3 bucket. It's called CCKMX case test. And, and we're going to look at the properties of this bucket. And if I scroll down, you'll see this. We have enabled the encryption, so the, any object that you're going to put this in bucket will be encrypted. Right. And it will be encrypted with the AWS KMS key, with the key ARN, which follows the exactly the same format. Doesn't matter whether the key is in KMS or key is outside of the AWS okay. cloud. And we're going to look at a little bit how does this key look like. Yeah. Everything's looking familiar so far. <laughs> yeah, let's, awesome. uh, let, let's just pause there for a sec. Yeah. This is launching in all of those services yeah. on the same day. So oh. we, we call this transparent to transparent yeah. to your services. <laughs> all you need to do is pick an XKS key, and then you'll get KMS routing that key to the external key store. So there's no work to do in the services other than designating you want to use an XKS key. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's really a great pattern that is used by yeah. the KMS, so it doesn't change anything for the services. So now, what, if you go a little bit on the KMS console itself, we will see the somewhat familiar term like alias. <laughs> but then if you go into detail, and this is where the new stuff will come back. Okay. Can I pause you real quick sure. too? Because uh, something just popped up here and, and popped into my mind. Yeah. Obviously, different types of keys exist, right? Symmetric, right. asymmetric. Right. Um, so is XKS primarily for symmetric keys? 
That's a great question. Yes, right now we are starting with a symmetric key. Okay. And then we'll work in future for the other type of keys as well. Okay. With specific algorithm or just any? So symmetric, uh, the key that's supporting is AS256. Okay. Yeah. A very uh, standard. No, that's, yeah, <laughs> standard, yeah. Uh, the new thing that you're going to see is the origin of the key itself. That's where we see yep. the external key store. And that tells you that the key is not in the cloud. It is outside the cloud within the customer data center, wherever they want to put it. Right. Um, and then there's a new thing that you're going to see is external key. And this is where we have the external key ID. Okay. And this is a, what I refer to as a pointer to the Cyphertrust Cloud Key Manager. Right. And I'm going to show you in a bit the Cyphertrust Manager interface. So if you look on the ID, it's the same ID that we put here, which okay. basically ties the pointer to the key material. Yeah, yeah. We refer to it as the next case ID because of the SKS interface. And down below, you'll see the key is blocked. And we're going to say that ah. since the key is blocked, if you try to access that object we just saw, we will not be able to access it. And that's the power of XGAS interface. <laughs> so I'm going to open this. And then we see that there's an now error. you got an error, yeah. And we're not able to see it. So now, in order to see it, I would have to go. So this is what I was talking about, uh, severing the link. The yeah. link between the AWS cloud and the customer data center is actually cut now. The yeah. key is blocked. Right. And so nobody can get access to the AWS resources in the AWS cloud right. until we come back in the Cypherdesk Cloud Manager within the customer data center. And now we're going to do the unblock of the key. So the key is unblocked. And just to walk you through, so what's going to happen is if, when I go back to the S3 bucket and try to open it, S3 will look at this object, will, will take the envelope, will see the data key that's encrypted by the KMS key, will send that data key to the KMS, it's still in the AWS cloud. Right. KMS only thinks that they, they know that by looking at that KMS key on that it's not here, it's somewhere outside. Right. And this is where it's gonna start calling the XKS proxy outside of the customer, outside of the AWS cloud. Sure. And when it reaches the um, customer data center with the Thal Thales Safetters Cloud Key Manager, this is where the real data key will be decrypted and returned back to the KMS, and the KMS will return back to the S3 so that the encryption can be, now this time it's gonna be decryption, can be done by the S3 and we'll be able to see this object. Got it. You ready to see the object? Yes. Right. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. Wait, what is the object first? Oh, Hold on. Yeah. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. The demo, I still can't see the it. Demo the demo gods. <laughs> the demo That's gods are gone. I said, I don't know. <laughs> I jinxed it. I said. <laughs> So there, there, we are. Is, there we go. <laughs> that was a little demo effect, <laughs> but done for purpose. But you can see it now. Yeah. That includes. Yeah. So that was actually live, right? And what I mean by that is, in Virginia, yeah. KMS opened a connection through TLS yeah. and right. reached a different building in Virginia yeah. that housed Talus key material in right. it, and made that key available back to KMS to give back to S3 to open that. So it's pretty fast and it's pretty transparent. Absolutely. But, yeah. but a lot of stuff happened behind that click. Right. Uh, to make that happen. Yeah. Are we not currently in Virginia? <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh no, okay, that's right. I don't know where I am most days. So, no, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, S3, obviously, a uh, great place for encryption. Um, but Jeremy, earlier you mentioned uh, one of my favorite pieces of KMS. You can encrypt inside and outside uh, application, or sorry, inside applications yourself with, that's right. with calls to KMS. Is, is S3 uh, one of the primary places that you're using XKS, or does it, yeah, you know, great can question. I actually, can, you know, yeah. am I encrypting things in my application with calls to KMS, and can that downstream go to XKS? So one of the, one of the nice properties of this design is that we didn't want to make work on the front side. Right. So right. all of the AP, you mentioned asymmetric encryption earlier. All of those asymmetric APIs, generate data key, generate data key with cipher tags, encrypt, all right. those APIs remain identical. All those services remain identical. Right. So to use client-side crypto, you just name a XKS key ID or a key alias in this example, and it will KMS will do the smarts to do the proxy routing for you. Really? And so oh, wow. KMS becomes kind of a smart proxy in the middle. Yes. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll answer your questions and we'll go ask Tala's questions or some of our other partners that support wow. XKS. We've published the specification to GitHub. We've launched with a number of other uh, options right. um, so that you have choice with which HSM you can terminate this sure. in. 
That's um, extremely flexible. Because yeah, it, you're basically only limited by where you can write code. I, I mean, <laughs> technically, you could build your own Right. external key store. We've published a ton of tooling to open source and GitHub. Yeah. We've got a test client. We've got a reference implementation. We've got the full specification. We're really trying to be very transparent because this is, you know, in order to achieve that control, you've got to understand what's happening under the hood. Absolutely. Transparency so we, and security is massive. So we did a lot of work here <laughs> yes. um, to be very forthcoming with how it all works. I love it. And you got the production development done by Thales, ready to be used by a customer as we launch with AWS. I love that too, that's great. And what I think is the, the important part of this release is ultimately what we've done is give customers choice. Yeah. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So you can you can still use KMS the way you've done before, and now you can use XKS. You've got you've got choice depending on what your needs and requirements are. You got it. That's that's absolutely right. Yeah. And that's a really good point, Chad. Um, you know, this is probably not for everyone. Obviously, right? You probably need a, a good reason to want to go out. Uh, like I said, there is additional lift uh, here. So you have to have a motivation like we were talking about earlier. We, we do talk about that in a blog. We have our XKS <laughs> blog out this week. So right. a little yeah. short plug for the XKS blog. We love um, plugs. But Fine. you're right. It, 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 it is. Uh, we don't tell our customers how to interpret compliance rules. Not. Yeah. So it's it, what we, you know, we have a lot of options that inside of KMS, we have an option, the native option called customer managed key. That key is entirely owned and controlled by customers. Right. And many of our customers will designate that is the sufficient way to meet this control. We also have not quite outside of the cloud, but a dedicated customer owned and operated HSM option called Cloud HSM. In fact, it was really, we got here faster because we already had the scaffolding right. through a, a feature we call in KMS, the custom key store. Yeah, yeah. And so we've been connecting to other HSMs for four years, so you're right, we have a number of options. Some of our customers said, you know, to strictly interpret Shrems, the words on the paper says, customer must be in sole possession of the key material. Right. And we said, okay, we're gonna build a, another option that gives you the strictest reading of those compliance rules. And that's, that's absolutely right, that's another option for customers to move those critical workload with the sensitive data to the cloud, which they were not able to do it before. So. We're super excited with this. This is awesome. Thank you both so much yeah. for joining us. I, I told you at the beginning, yeah. and I hope, hopefully I proved myself to you. Uh, I, I really it. am I very passionate about encryption. I love it. Yeah, I'm fascinated by it. Uh, so this, very exciting launch uh, for me. So go check out KMS in general. Go see, you know, if you haven't, haven't looked at it before. Uh, go nerd out on some encryption like I do. <laughs> and then go check out XKS if you've got some external key management needs. You nailed it. You nailed All it. right. Yeah. Chad, All right. thank you for being here. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. All right. All we right. will be right back <laughs> with more from AWS On Air. Thank you. Thanks.